Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back now with our next game. And this time we're gonna have a TVT for you. And with me again is none other than Elmo. Good day everyone, this is of course Poison TV casting the gaming cc.com SC2 Open Cup for prize pool of a hundred and fifty euros. Alrighty, so let's introduce our players. And first of all, we have our blue Terran player spawning in the top left side, who goes by the name of Bradhawk. And in the opposing corner, we are looking at the red Terran player playing for 7x. It is Vel. Alright, haven't heard of Vel here. Um, as much as uh, so in comparison so, to Bradock, so you Bradock, don't know him quite well. No, I don't know him at all. But <laughs> to be honest, but of course Bradock. Let's just keep focus on Bradock. Ah, Bradock's just an amazing player, of course, and uh, also a very strong Russian Terran player in the in, in the Russian scene. And uh, yeah, let's see how far he can get this time. Yeah, absolutely. He already went for a very, very quick gas here. Even, I think it was a 12th gas or something along those ways. Mm -hmm. Which is... Which is not, not usually normal in a TVT. You usually wait for your gas just a little bit longer. Um, just as about well was taking his gas. That is usually the normal timing where you would get your gas at. Uh, however, Bert, of course, with that excessive gas that he's mining right now, could potentially throw down a very very quick um, factory and then later on could transition into maybe a starport or he could he could just roll with um, the things that he has with the factory so I'm kind of curious to see what he's planning on doing here yeah very true we do see the reactor, uh, reactor here added being added here directly afterwards so he will be going for some helium ply here uh, a little bit early on and I wonder if he's actually keeping up the gas count if he's taking a second gas uh, to get the staff of play there as well, or he's just deciding to go for um, a quicker expansion. Of course, there could be the potential of of, of Braddock throwing down a, a star port here to get maybe let's say one medevac, and then go for some drops, and then later on add on the the command center. Of course, you also could go for the quick command, quote unquote quick command center here. Uh, it's it's pretty much open to him so far. He's not really throwing down a star port or something along those ways. Oh, oh but he wait! Is. Oh, I see. I see where we are taking this. Brother going for the proxy starport, which is usually a very, very cool play, just because you can have those medevacs a little bit closer to your opponent, and therefore, if you go for medevac drops, they will hit a lot earlier. However, on the other side, we see well also going for the starport. He is actually adding on the tech lab, so he's probably going for a banshee or a raven, maybe even a viking. Which is kind of more standard than what his Braddock is doing, of oh, course. Look at that, he has to be actually passing by the starport here. Oh, very, that's so very lucky. Closely. So, oh, yeah. so, so lucky for Braddock, so unlucky here for Well, that he just barely misses that. But I think he, he might be already avoiding something like that, because he saw the quick factory, he saw that there has been no further attack, and that Braddock was still mining that gas, so he could probably be already knowing what is going on here. Yeah, Braddock actually with the light pressure here, trying to do as much damage as possible. Also seeing the starport, not seeing the attack lab though, so not really confirming what he's actually gonna see here. And uh, yeah, he will retreat for the moment. I wonder if he's gonna go for the expansion as well. And oh, look at that! Well, actually killing off an SCV here in the main base. With his uh, yeah. own SCV. <laughs> that SCV already doing a nice job. At the same time, of course, Braddock is now about to drop into the main base. He's already loading up his medevac. There are a couple of Marines though for Well, so he should be able to push that back if he's reacting properly. And there we go, the medevac not really healing the units at the moment since it's dropping. The SCVs of the Red Terran player are pulled. Also, an auto turret does go down from the Raven here. And oh. with that, he should be able to push that back, but at the cost of. Uh, losing one SCV, so that was actually a very good hold there for well. Absolutely, the odd turret and the mine now in position. You might even get a snipe here on the medevac, so very well done here by our red Terran player. 
who's uh, setting a quite good defense and getting now the cloak banshee. He's already working on that cloak upgrade. First Benji is about to spawn here. And if we look at the main base of Braddock at the moment, there are really no defenses set up to deal with a potential Benji that could be coming towards his way. Of course, the rally point is not really there to hide the Banshee a lot or something like that. <laughs> Pretty much flying right above the, the army of Braddock there. So uh, if Well really wants to go for the Banshee harassment, then by now Braddock should know that this Banshee is on the way. He actually already has a Viking there, so that is very, very nice there for the mm. blue. Uh, Terran player will eventually take out that Banshee unless it cloaks. And there we go, there's the cloak. And it will get away, but at the same time, Braddock's actually now pushing up the ramp to the base of the blue, ter uh, the red Terran player, excuse me. But of course, Val already setting up a siege tank, so he should be fine to hold his, naturally, uh, his uh, front entrance there. Yeah, very nice defense here by Val, and He's trying to do some uh, damage now in the main base as the Vikings have to retreat here for the moment. N not granting the map vision he wants to, but uh, losing quite some um, yeah, supply depots and the mine being in a uh, vision here to get some damage done there as well. So, very good pressure here by Braddock and he w might be losing some workers if the Vikings actually um, are not actually rallying into the main base. I think I saw one Viking uh, heading back to the main base. Yeah, they're just arriving there. Benshi has, of course, a little bit of time left. Is already picking up a couple of quick kills. Four. Can he get a third one? A fourth one. Does get five. That is actually not too bad. At the same time, of course, Braddock is still engaging. But I think with those two siege tanks, the Widow Mine, and all the stuff that Rel has, I'm not going to think that he's able to push through here. Even though the, uh, the, the Hellions are getting some nice connections onto those Marines. But the tanks are at the moment the thing that makes this front unbreachable for Braddock. Yeah, but seeing the command center already about to be landed and 10 worker supply lead here for well as well. So he's actually in a really good spot right now. Indeed he is. He's already ha having a l very, very nice economic lead here. And also you gotta keep in mind, he already has two tanks out. He's already producing the third one. So he also has the advantage in the tank count and that could come in real handy if this game proceeds to the later stages. However, Braddock now going for the double drop inside the main base of well there. Of course, no defenses to be able to deal with this drop. And he's going to lose a lot of SCVs here. The reaction is not perfect. And he's also not really pulling them far away so those Hellions could still get some nice connections onto them. Yeah, very true. So Braddock will lose uh, a lot of his units here already. And oh, the mine. Is it in vision? Oh, almost got that uh, shot on the medevac. And oh, will lose it eventually as Braddock wanted to proceed that damage being done. And there was also Troy sniping off the uh, siege tank with the Viking. So I see actually Braddock uh, with a big disadvantage right now. Absolutely, he's definitely not in the perfect position here to actually be ahead in this game. Also, he's not really having the army that you would need to be in a superior position. Also, if you look at the worker count, he's down in terms of that. So he's very, really in a very bad position to actually be able to compete with his opponent here, who is now already securing his natural expansion very, very well. He already has four, uh, three, excuse me, tanks in position here, with the third, fourth one sitting in the main. So there's not really anything that Braddock can do about that. Yes, this is very true. So we do see actually Cloak Banshee now on the way here for Braddock, but we already have the Viking, already have the... Um, yeah, there was actually... A raven, but it, it seems like it was taken out here by Bretta, therefore not having that potential of um, yeah getting the vision here. So there's even a reactor being added now for well, so the banshees might do some damage. Absolutely, they're currently strafing around on the map here. Uh, and as you were completely rightly mentioning, there are no real defenses set up to be able to deal with them. And also, if you look at the marine count of Val at the moment, it's only sitting at 8. Which is not too much. He has a couple of Vikings, though. Uh, he's already guarding the, the 7 drop path where units could come in. But the natural is completely pretty much undefended. The bench, she enters now. The natural will take out 1 SCV, will take out 3, 4, 5, and a 6. Wow, and in the main base there as well, 
a lot of ban uh, a Banshee do actually doing so much damage. Well, it doesn't have any detection here and any uh, defenses to say, to say the least. Wow, look at how many workers Braddock already killed. Wow, 32 workers already killed here. By Braddock who is now actually in a very, very nice lead here with 40 to 29 workers. And also he's he's actually now ahead in terms of army, so he made the comeback happen here. Currently 87 to 66 supply. And he is working on the blue flame upgrade for his Hellions, which is always a very, very nice thing to have. And with that, of course, there could be uh, some run buys happening here very, very shortly. And that could kill up a lot of workers. Also, the tanks oh. are now going down because the Banshees are doing massive amounts of damage. Yeah, no repair on the siege tank. Redox sniping out so many units, being so cost effective and bringing himself, as you were mentioning before, back to the game and switching up to the uh, Macking style right now. He has a lot of siege tanks already in production. Also, Bradtok has already fortified a very, very nice position outside of Val's uh, main base. So this is kind of a light contain here, especially with the Widow Mine. Val has to be very, very careful if he wants to go out of there. He's now going to start on the third base rocks here to fly, uh, to fly his command center over there. But of course, he's now in a very, very bad position with Bradtok already having landed his command center. And he's now also going to move out and look at all those Hellions, 15 Hellions with their blue flame upgrade so they will be able to do massive amounts of damage if they maybe go for the run by. Yeah, Brother loves his Hellions so they can actually do tons and tons of damage to the economy of well if he is not prepared. But of course here we go, there is a little bit of an attempt here. He's just gonna go for the natural base, seems himself in a superior position but actually well defending this quite well and will be uh, take out the rocks. Yeah, that was already working out very nicely there for Well, was taking out a lot of Talions without losing basically anything. He's now uh, letting those Rock Tower collapse here to be able to fortify his third base position. But Braddock already sieging out, out outside, uh, sieging up outside of the third base. Uh, and therefore is of course limiting Val's space here inside the third base because he cannot really siege forward here to take a better position. He's now going to start working on those rocks and of course they will die off very very quickly here. Yeah, the Vikings actually just have to be in positioning, so he could actually already fire on the first siege tank here. He can actually compete against this, so Braddock not having that many... Uh, yeah, he doesn't have any air dominance to this. Absolutely, he's now going to move his Vikings over there. Uh, well, that is, of course, so he has the air dominance at the moment, and that is, of course, very, very important. Better kind of missing out on this point, which is kind of unfortunate, because as you were completely rightly mentioning, he was already in range, but the vision was not enough to actually start firing on the very first tanks there, and he's now going to be forced to pull back out of there. Both players currently researching their plus one attack upgrades, but with one difference, well, he's actually going for the Schwarzenegger here, which is the <laughs> Thor. Yeah. First one already was spawning there, and of course those Thors with their those Thors with their <laughs> huge damage output and their huge HPs, they can really change the outcome of a battle quite drastically. And also, if you think of Vikings, if they stack up, the Thors could get some nice volley off onto them and take out a lot of them. Yeah, that is very true. Look at that. Also, a mine being placed here, and uh, I think he spotted the drop here that might be coming up here from Val. And this is the strength of Braddock. He's just really macroing behind this so, so uh, nicely. Having that expansion now on the left, having another expansion on the right, taking as much resources out of it as possible. And, uh, well, yeah, well, he did see um, the Medivacs therefore pulling off the SCVs there as well. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I'm saying well too often. But uh, we do mm -hmm. see <laughs> Braddock actually moving out right now. Yeah, well, at the same time, it's of course going for the drops here. Let's see if there are any defenses set up for Braddock, and I have to be... I'm afraid he does not have any defenses. Those Hellbats could do some massive amounts of damage, already taking out most of the workers that were situated at the third base. Of course, also Braddock is now running into the siege tanks of well here, taking some huge damage. And it's not really working out. He's trading very, very inefficiently, I have to say. Drop is also now going on into the natural. There are still no units set up. And Braddock is losing a lot of SCVs here. Drops down to 53 in harvest account compared to 70 for his opponent. So well actually once again turning the game around just a little bit here. Yeah. 
He's trying to do as much damage as possible. He's setting up a fourth base, but he needs to be aware of what is coming up actually at his opponent's bases. Uh, as there is one at the thir uh, third base location as well. But look at that! Halbert's actually Ow. doing a lot of damage now to the third base location, and uh, at, re at least he's trying to minimize the damage that has been done on his work line. Oh, actually coming back and now dropping onto the fresh mules, which is very good snipe. Yeah, he's well, uh, he will get at least two of those mules. That is very, very nice there for Brad. Uh, well, excuse me. Doing some nice damage. Now actually putting himself in a perfect position in terms of workers. 45 to 72 here currently for him. And also if you take a look at the overall army supplies, it's currently 109 to 85. And the most important thing, he actually has uh, the, the air dominance, if I'm not completely mistaken. No, he actually has, um, Brad has more uh, Vikings. But um, he's he's spread up in a very very nice fashion here, so he has a great uh, positioning on those siege tanks, and Braddock should really be very very careful if he's deciding to move into there. Yeah, he has no defenses here back in his base. Therefore, a lot of workers have, are about to be killed, and uh, even though he has a huge advantage uh, uh, in the army supply, he's losing quite some workers right now, and so he will be limited in his income and giving well the opportunity to come uh, even. Absolutely, I mean, uh, at this point I guess Val is actually ahead. Uh, yeah. Of course you gotta keep into consideration that uh, Barak is actually currently on five bases, but his income, even though he's on five bases, is just a little bit higher than the one of Val, and that was probably because of a lot of mules that were just dropped. Right now, well, Wells' income is actually higher. There are some Hellions in the, inside the third base or fourth base, whatever, of uh, Well, uh, of well, they're taking out some SCVs, uh, which will uh, which will close the gap here between uh, the or with the worker count. They're currently 58 to 66 in favor of Well, but as we now are looking at this huge army of Well moving out, there's currently 130 army supply. This game could end very very quickly here. Wow, uh, now we see the clash between these two forces. Here we go, siege chains are sieging up. Braddock a little bit late with the sieging up, therefore losing quite a units here already. And now the forces are approaching, trying to snipe down one Viking here by another, granting himself the dominance. Absolutely, but Braddock now has a very, very nice position here. Bra uh, Val should not really engage into this, even though his Thors, uh, Thors have a lot of HP. They die off very quickly if they are shot with uh, 10 tanks at the same time. Oh. He's just gonna unsiege siege forward here. I'm not sure if I would agree with this decision. He's doing some nice damage, but also Braddock is taking up one tank after another. And now they will uh, come to a dead stop here. This is kind of a stalemate going on at the moment. Where neither player can do anything about this situation at the moment. Oh, but look at that. Well, actually killed off 50 workers right now. He's even uh, getting ahead in the worker killed counts. Here. And uh, this is a very amazing, um, yeah, very, very, very amazing play here. Uh, assaulting now his opponent, getting up with expansion now on the top right side there as well. But still, Braddock is ha having that air dominance right now and trying to trade off as much as possible. Yeah, and Braddock definitely at the moment getting the better trades. And here we go. Halberts are actually unloaded. I thought he would drop them onto the tanks because that would have worked out actually perfectly. There are no Vikings for a well there to stop that from happening. And I think he could have breached the siege line very, very easily if he just went ahead and dropped the Halberts onto that. Yeah, I but think he decides to, uh, instead of that, go for the drops, which also can do a lot of damage. Yeah, I think you're completely right. This would have been the better choice, and uh, Val will be retreating here for the moment. He sees the siege tanks now in the third base location and a lot of uh, pressure now being built. Oh, but look at that, the Hellbat drop now onto the, all the siege tanks, doing great amount of damage. And that is what I was saying about if Braddock did this with Well's main army, he would have killed that off very, very easily. Uh, but Well actually was able to, to, to take out that drop with that, but of course he lost a lot of workers. Drops down to 51 harvesters right now to 63. For Braddock, who is now actually taking once again a small supply lead here with 190 to 265, is moving now to this north path. He will take out the fifth base of Val eventually. That is a planetary fortress, so he should siege up and then eventually will let down. Yeah, let's see if he can actually defend this base. This is actually quite important, but the siege tanks from Braddock 
actually sniping out one Si Chang here by another. This is not good here for while. He needs to retreat, be retreating, and maybe go for a counter aggression. As we see, have a huge drop now in the left on the left side. Yeah, Val is now returning the favor, but there are a lot of turrets set up that will take out the medevacs. So these units are pretty much committed. Val cannot re or get them back out of there. And he just lost his fifth base. Therefore, Braddock is now taking a huge army lead with 131 to 80 supply. You gotta keep in mind that he actually was down in upgrades for the most part of that. So he was doing some amazing jobs there. Oh, well, he should have focused that command center here, which would be very important to actually give him a, a slight edge in this game. It's a back and forth game, and it's so important now, the positioning of these siege tanks, and uh, really to secure as many bases as possible. Braddock is now preparing a two-pronged aggression. He's already setting up siege tanks outside of Bell's natural base, and therefore will put the contain onto his opponent. At the same time, he's going to push into that what soon is going to be a fourth base or something like that, or fifth base, excuse me. At the same time, he's also besieging the third, fourth, whatever base of Val will take a lot of workers there as well, and eventually also the CC if Well does not lift that. And now, Well is kind of pulled apart. He doesn't really know what to do about that. I have to say. Yeah, absolutely. And look at the bank uh, also. Uh, well, having a lot of gas, but not really getting a lot of marine minerals um, mining. So Redhawk needs, on uh, the other side, needs to get as much gas as possible. Well, is still keeping up the pressure, going for counter aggression, which is very, very good. But still, he needs to somehow hold these bases now in the left side. And we're going to see some halberd drops now onto the siege tank line. I mean, going for the counterattacks is a cool idea. Look at but that. It's not going to stop Braddock from moving into there. Alberts are now dropping onto those siege tanks. Therefore, of course, Braddock is at the same time moving forward with the siege tanks because the, the, the siege tanks of Well are distracted. However, oh, wow. it looks like Braddock will actually lose this battle. Wow. To the fourth base. I don't know how Well did that because that was actually a beautiful engagement for Braddock. I, I, I expected it to be there. At the same time, Well is actually sieging up in the third base. Of Braddock, there will take out one CC because that's burning down, and the other one has to be lifted. There, of course, no more mining there for the Blue Terran player. And Braddock in the natural, moving into the natural of his opponent. This is this is madness. This is madness indeed. A lot of counter aggressions. Both players actually still on the same kind of uh, army supply here, and as uh, going on their bases, a little bit of a uh, smaller base trade scenario we are seeing right now, and that. We, the, yeah, there is no counter now to the siege tank line that is set up in the natural. Therefore, the reinforcement path is uh, yeah is under pressure. Indeed, also Wells units inside the food base of Braddock have been cleaned up, so that should be so uh, sorted out um, by Braddock here, who's actually now or whose units inside the natural base of Well are actually now under fire because. There of course have been some reinforcements that have been gathered up in the main base and they eventually will push on down there. Also a huge chunk of his army is currently sitting in inside the 5th base. Redok just moving by that, eventually trying to maybe be aggressive towards that. Not sure what his plans are for this upcoming engagement. Yeah, well, it's getting some banshees. This is a good choice, but Braddock having the Vikings in position, and now he needs to decide: is he actually breaking through, or is he gonna just uh, go and assault the third base, which is actually quite a smart decision to go for. And look at that, Braddock actually uh, next to the command center of Val in the top right position. It is really now very, very tactical play. Who is getting the advantage, and how well can actually break through? Yeah, Braddock is now moving forward, he's taking the natural, but there are a lot of siege, ta siege tanks inside the main base of his opponent, as well as a huge oh. amount of helmets, but look at that damage, absolutely everything dies, and Bell drops down to 110 supply, Braddock is pushing forward, he's breaking the siege lines of his opponent with some helmet drops, and the siege tanks do go down, and therefore it now looks very bad for Well, who is trying to go for some counter aggression, but that of course also will be cleaned up by Braddock here, who is now looking to take the game here, very, very uh, performance here by the Blue Terran player. What a game, and therefore Bretok will take this very game here in the first round of that best of three series. Well done here by our Russian Terran player. Wow, what a game. This was, I have to say, one of the most exciting TV uh, TVTs I have seen in a long time. 
I mean, there was very, 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 very little direct engagements, but a lot of battles happening absolutely everywhere at the same time. It's a great multitasking by either player here, and I'm already very excited for game number two here between the two. But while we're waiting for that, of course, I'm going to do some shameless plugs. Of course, if you are enjoying our casting, do click that follow button, helps out a lot. Also, we're currently trying to become a Twitch partner to be able to have this quality select thingamabob uh, in the bottom of the screen or stream whatever because actually I, I know a lot of you guys have problems with the with Twitch uh, because they have either a bad connection themselves or Twitch is just acting a fool as it usually is so um, being able to downscale the resolution usually helps with that but unfortunately we are not able to um, to have that of course eventually if we if you're growing big enough which might uh, add us to their partner program. So every follow counts. Also, you can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. The links are all down in the channel description. And with that being said, I think while we're waiting, we're going to put on some more music. So guys, stay tuned. The next game is just right around the corner.